The information contained in this tutorial video can also be found on the Stern Center for Research Computing website at scrc.stern.nyu.edu. In this video tutorial, I will show you how to install some example grid processing programs into your home directory and then how to run a simple job. This tutorial assumes that you already know how to connect to a Stern Research Computing Linux machine. As you can see, I am already logged in to the Stern Linux machine vLita. To get the example grid programs, type get grid examples. This command will create a directory call called grid examples and copy the example programs into it. Make sure you type the command with the upper and lower case letters because Linux is case sensitive. For example, if you were to type get grid examples, all lowercase, Linux will not find the command. Next type ls space minus l. This command lists all the files and directories in the current directory. Notice the directory grid examples exists now. The command ls by itself shows you just the names of the files and directories. ls with the option minus l formats the output into a convenient long format and shows you more information than just the names of the files. So now let's run a simple grid job. Type cd grid and then press the tab key. Notice Linux has an autocomplete feature which completes a directory or file name for you. Press enter. cd is short for change directory, so the command cd will change our current directory to grid examples. You can see this by typing the command pwd, which is short for print working directory. The output of pwd is the current location or path in the Linux file system. In our case, we are currently in the directory grid examples which is contained within the directory our world, and so forth. When I type ls-l, I see a list of directories, each containing an example grid program. I'm going to run the simple job, so let's cd to the simple job directory. In the directory simple job, ls-l shows me one file hello.sh. This is the submission script for the simple job. A submission script contains the options and commands that you need to run a job on the Stern grid. The grid is simply a cluster of cooperating computers. The grid engine is a batch queuing system responsible for accepting, scheduling, and managing the distributed execution of user jobs on the grid. Let's edit the script by typing nano and then the file name we want to edit, in this case hello.sh. The first thing to note are the lines beginning with just a pound sign. These lines are comments, that is, they are used to convey information to the user of this script and are ignored by the grid engine. For example, the first five lines are comments. These comment lines tell us the name of the script and a description of what it does. The lines beginning with pound dollar are directives and options that are passed to the grid engine. The first one in this file is pound dollar space minus capital N space hello job. This directive tells the grid engine that this job is to be known as hello job. The name hello job is arbitrary, that is, you can name your job whatever you like. The next pound dollar line is a directive that tells the grid engine to put the error and output files into the current working directory. 
The third pound dollar line is an option that specifies the maximum running time for this job. This job is scheduled for a max run time of five minutes. You should estimate enough time for your job to complete or else the job will be terminated after this time has elapsed. The pound dollar line with the lowercase space minus m space ea instructs the grid engine to send you an email at the end of the job or if the job aborts due to an error. The pound dollar line with the uppercase space minus m and then an email address tells the grid engine where to send the email. Let me change this email address to my own. At the end of the script is where you would specify the command or commands you want to run on the grid. In this simple example, there are two Linux commands to be run. The first one is sleep for 10 seconds. And the second one is print the text hello world to an output file. OK, let's save the changes we made to this submission script and exit the nano editor. All the Nano's commands are shown at the bottom of the window. To save the program, hold the control key and press the O. When prompted for a file name, just press Enter to accept the default. The file is now saved. To exit, hold control and press X. We are now back at the Linux prompt. To submit the job to the grid, type qsub hello.sh. Notice you get a message saying that your job has been submitted to the grid. You can check the state of the job by typing qstat. Notice that qstat shows you the job ID number the job name, the state of the job, and in the first case of QSTAT, it was queued and waiting, and in the second case, the state is running and shows that the job is scheduled and running on COMP3, the machine named COMP3. Once the job has been scheduled, its state changes to this R, or running state. Once the job completes, QSTAT no longer returns any results. After the job completes, two files are created. These files' names begin with the job name, and in this case that's hello job. To list the files, type ls minus l. Hello job dot e will contain errors if any occurred. Hello job dot o will contain your program's output. The number, 1708, is the job task ID, so it will be different with each job you submit. In this case, since the job ran successfully, the .e file is empty, and the .o file contains the program output, namely the text, hello world. To see this, type more hello job dot e and when I type this and press enter, I will see that there is nothing in this file. If I want to see the contents of hello job dot o, we can see that the text hello world is contained within this file. I will also have received an email with details about the job. Let's take a look. So here's my email. The subject line shows the job ID number and the name. And the contents of the email show job statistics. Make note of the exit status. It will be zero if the job completed successfully.
This concludes the tutorial video for installing the example programs and running a simple job on the grid.